Hi, this is Von Herzog, and I'd like to welcome you back to The Social Club, my analog digital hybrid studio. I hope you might have seen some of my speaker videos before, but today I'm going to be covering an issue that you may or may not have seen a video on. I haven't made one for this topic before. But here it is, horizontal and vertical speaker placement. They're two very different things. And I have back there the Yamaha NS10, the speaker that originally started the, hey, lay it over on its side craze. In fact, the NS10Ms that I have back here are the original ones from 1978 before they changed the tweeter and the orientation on them. In 1987, they released the Yamaha NS10M Studio. And it came with an updated tweeter with a little more power handling, some foam around the side to deal with some resonance issues. And the big difference was it was horizontal. Uh, it was set up to work on its side. And they did that not out of the initial design, but out of the application of how they were being used. So the Yamaha NS10Ms were being used in studios and they were being laid down horizontally on the meter bridge of the big consoles. And that was the typical way you saw them used. You saw them laid down more than you saw them stood up. And it was a speaker that does okay laying on its side. It definitely changes its uh, sound when you lay it on its side, and it also changes depending whether or not you put the tweeter at the top or the bottom or the inside or the outside. Now, when they originally designed them, the original 1978 versions were vertical with the tweeter towards the outside. That's the orientation. You can see it standing up behind me there, right? So that's the initial design and how they intended it to be used. When they laid it down, they put the tweeter on the top, so when you actually lay them down, you swap them <laughs> so that the tweeter shows up on the top for the left and the top for the right. And as you can see, I also have the Amphion 118 back there. And um, I had done some videos on how to align the speakers with a laser pointer. And Amphion reached out on Instagram and actually said, hey, you should try laying them on their sides. We recommend that too. So I did. So for this video, I'm going to be comparing three different studio monitors vertically and horizontally. I'm going to be using a reference mic to capture the responses, and then I'll show them to you side by side, you know, adjusted for volume, so that you can see how flat a speaker is, how it changes when you lay it on its side versus vertical, and ultimately you get a better idea for how the speakers are performing as a pair in this space. The majority of speakers that you probably have or have listened to were designed to be used vertically. Now, when you're designing a speaker vertically, the tweeter and the woofer are getting to your ear at about the same time because they're coming at you from the same vertical plane. Uh, one might be higher or lower, which could change its speed in getting to you, but ultimately they're getting there at about the same time. Now, when you rotate that speaker on its side, the tweeter and the woofer are now separated on a horizontal plane. And depending on how you angle your speakers, you might find the woofer or the tweeter is now much closer to your ear than the other driver. And that's where you can start, kind of start to get into some issues. So what we're trying to do is to see when we lay that speaker down, how is it interacting with the room any differently? Are the freak, is the frequency getting smoother and more even, or is it becoming more uneven and harder to work on? One thing I take a lot of pride on is how well treated my space is. I have RLX T fusers all over the place. Above me, to the sides, behind me, on the back wall. And I have them there because they do a really good job at diffusing the sound instead of just making for a dead room. So I end up having the reflection issues taken care of. I have it mitigated because I use proper treatment. Different traps, foam, diffusion, absorption, the right ratio, <laughs> making sure that my space sounds how it should sound. And that when I sit here, I'm not having to worry about reflections from parts in the room. That I'm hearing the speakers as clear as I can without interference. I'm going to be comparing three different speakers today. The original Yamaha NS10M from 1978, the updated 
version of it, which is what Amphion considers the 118 to be. They consider it to be a modern NS10, where the original NS10 was known for being brutally honest. They say the 118 is beautifully honest. It's a much more pleasing speaker to hear. Uh, it's not nearly as harsh or as fatiguing as the NS10s. So the 118s do a lot of the same things that the NS10s do, but they do it in a way that's a lot easier on your ear. And then I have the Incline Fidelity VC7P. It's a passive speaker with a seven inch aluminum comb, uh, aluminum tweeter from Seos in Norway, and a expertly designed crossover by me. But I wanna include it in there so that you can see when I'm comparing two industry standards of the Yamaha NS10, the Amphion 118, and I put my speaker right next to it, how does it compare? Look, I'm not trying to pull any tricks here. I'm just trying to show you how it compares next to the big boys. And Amphion and Yamaha are the big boys. So let's see, when we try them all out and we just shoot them out with the microphone from the listening spot, what sounds the best? You know, what gives me the flattest response? What gives me the best phase? We're gonna look at it. Let's check it. So let's get to the measurements. I'm going to be using a calibrated reference microphone so that we know what we're capturing should be as flat as we can get it. We're gonna be using REW, which is Room EQ Wizard, and it's a free app for both PC or Mac. I'm using my Mac. Um, but that's what we'll be using to capture the frequency sweeps to see what the response is in room. And then you'll be able to see when we compare the horizontal to the vertical, which one looks better. Does it change by speaker? Do we have a feeling that it's more based on how they interact with the room? Could be a lot of different things, but we're gonna get to the bottom of it. So let's just get down to it. We can't really keep talking about it without knowing how these speakers measure. So let's measure them and check it out. All right, so I've got all the measurements in Room EQ Wizard now, and I have them color-coded so that we can kind of tell the difference when we're looking at them. So the brighter colors are going to be the vertical placements of the speakers, and the horizontal placement will be the same color, but a lighter shade. So for the NS10, as you can see here, this is how it comes in. Not a lot of low end to this speaker, a very pronounced mid-range, and right here, you can see that's where they used to use the tissue paper over the tweeter on the original old school NS10s because this 5K bump here would shred your ears. It hurt. <laughs> so what happens if we tip it over on its side? Let's look. All right. Well, the difference is the frequency response now looks a lot more like an aurotone. <laughs> It's very mid-range pronounced with a bit of a arc to it. It's very mid-heavy from like, well, mid to mid-high up into your high frequencies. It essentially covers what an aritone used to, which is about 200 hertz up to 4K or so. And that is definitely the highlighted region here for these. Going back to the vertical, what does it look like if we compare it to the Amphion 118? There we go. As you can see, the Amphion is a lot flatter than the NS10, a lot smoother, uh, a more pronounced high end. So looking at the Amphion now, what happens if we tip it over on its side? Huh, it doesn't change a whole lot. Actually, it kind of gets a little bit smoother. Now you get 
the energy shifting from like 300 up to five to seven here. Uh, as opposed to where here it's, it's, it's a bit lower. When the speaker's vertical, it's a bit lower in the frequency band. When you rotate it horizontally, the volume bump shifts up a bit in the frequency band. So if we have the Yamaha NS10, the Amphion 118, what happens when we get to my speaker, the Inclined Fidelity VC7P? That's pretty flat. Comparing it to the Amphion, there's the Inclined Fidelity. Comparing it to the Yamaha, there it is. But what happens if we turn my speaker on its side? Kind of the same thing you saw in the other one. So here's what I'll do. Let me show you the overlays. If I layer the three vertical speakers on top of each other, let's see how they stack up. What do you think is better? The blue or the red? Or the yellow? So remember, the yellow is the NS10, vertical. The blue is the Inclined Fidelity VC7P vertical. And the red is the Amphion 118 vertical. So that's how the vertical ones stack up in this room. Now if I take them away and we just look at the horizontal ones, let's look at what we're looking at here when we look at the horizontal comparisons overlaid. Now, if I add the other ones back in, that's what everything looks like. So which speaker ends up being the best for you? It's hard to say. You know, you're gonna want something that's playing right around in here, right? Kind of be middle of the pack. So take the Yamaha away, the other Yamaha away. take the verticals away. That is the inclined fidelity VC7P in the blue. And in the light red is the Amphion 118. Now, if we were to lay those two vertically, how do they look? The Amphion doesn't look as flat um, vertically as it does horizontally. And that's everything. So which looks better to you? I need you to drop me a comment and tell me what you think. You might be surprised about the Yamaha NS10, right? Because everyone talks about how much they love them, yet they're clearly not as flat as you'd expect them to be, being that they're a studio monitor. But remember, they didn't start that way. They started as hi-fi speakers. They were adopted as studio monitors. So. Here we are. So now let's look at the clarity of the different speakers and how clear they perform across the frequency band. There's the vertical NS10. Now, if we compare it to the horizontal NS10, is it gonna be better? Hmm. It seems that the mid range is clearer with the horizontal placement. And it also looks clearer down here in the lows. So you can see why they started to get turned on their sides because <laughs> maybe the response improved for the room. And that's why Yamaha went back and started offering new ones turned on their side. So you could still see the logo upright marketing. Now, if we're gonna look at the Amphion, let's look at the vertical and the horizontal and see which provides better clarity. Hmm, pretty close. I know that these speakers cross over to 1600 Hertz frequency point. So knowing that and coming over here and looking at that frequency point, you can see the crossover point right here. Thanks to the waveguide that the Amphion uses, turned horizontally or vertically, it performs almost identically in the room from a clarity standpoint. And finally, the Inclined Fidelity VC7P. Let's check it out vertically versus horizontally. All right, while I did not design these to be used horizontally, 
They definitely can be. So as you can see, the clarity is great on these. One of the last things I want to look at here is the distortion of the different speakers. So starting with the NS10 vertically, here are the distortion levels. So as you can see, if we're calling 87 the through point that we're measuring at, I mean, the highest distortion in the mid-range here is about 40 dB. So, I mean, you're talking 37 decibels down is the distortion on the NS10. And it doesn't change a whole lot horizontally to vertically. Since the SPL level goes up here, so does the distortion, you know. Amphion 118 is very low distortion. Their distortion's a little higher in the woofer down here, um, but you can tell it's gonna be pretty much the same if you keep it vertical or horizontal, because talking about the same drivers, the distortion of the drivers isn't really gonna change. How they, how the sound waves are sent through the air in the room, that might change a little bit based on the horizontal versus vertical placement, but you're not changing the drivers. And there's mine. The distortion here is coming through the port. Uh, I also make a sealed version of this with a passive radiator uh, that cleans up some of that. But as you can see, we're very low distortion across here. So there you have it. This is the difference. You're actually getting to see in this well-treated space, if I'm measuring the vertical versus the horizontal of the same speaker and I keep the microphone properly on axis, this is what you're looking at. This is the difference. So leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Which speaker do you think performed the best? Which one do you think needs more work? Which one surprised you? Leave me a comment. Also, hit that like button. That helps me out. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for coming to this video. I hope you learned something please hit that like button, leave me a comment, it helps. I'd like to know what you guys think of these videos, what your comments are, and uh, you know, hit me up on social media. Check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash social club sound. And until the next time, this has been Von Herzog from The Social Club.